Welcome to this MuseScore tutorial. Today we'll look at exporting MIDI from MuseScore and then loading that into a digital audio workstation to give us better control over the sound of the instruments. I normally work in Cubase, but I've also done the same kind of thing with Cakewalk by BandLab, in case you're looking for a free option. I also examine Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover as an option for a free orchestral sample library. Feel free to skip to those sections that are marked for you. So let's get going. OK, so I have a great composition or arrangement in MuseScore. Now what? Well, traditionally, we would now print the music, hand it out to our musician friends, get them to rehearse it, and then finally gather them all together in a recording studio and record it. But that traditional model of live recording is becoming less and less common, and it's not just because it's difficult to gather people together during a pandemic. Technology has advanced to a point that many instruments can be sampled at a high enough quality for sampled instruments to replace live performances. The philosophy behind this shift can and has been debated at great length, but even if we decide to keep recording live musicians in the future, which I hope we do, the control that an arranger, composer, or sound engineer has over the sound achieved with sampled instruments is undeniable and worth knowing a little bit about. So hopefully you know that MuseScore uses MIDI information to play back sounds so that we can hear our work. It sends those MIDI instructions to the synthesizer, which we can look at from the View menu and Synthesizer. On the Fluid tab, we can see that I'm using the MuseScore General Sounds, which is a sound font file. There are other sound font files available that you can download and add into the synthesizer. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you want to try that route out. But there is a whole industry around creating music with MIDI without using a single microphone. Most of this industry is centered around using a DAW, or a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, such as Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, Ableton, or Fruity Loops. This allows us to separate control of the sound from control of the notation like we have in MuseScore. To do that, we need to access the MIDI file that is behind this notation and export that out of MuseScore. So we'll go to File, Export, and instead of Export to PDF, we'll choose a MIDI. We have our full score selected, and we print Export. Then we save it where we want it, and notice that it's a MIDI file. Just so that I don't mix them up later, and save. Now we go and find that MIDI file and load it into our door. Now we'll open up Cubase and create an empty project. There are some settings that you need to make sure of before importing the MIDI file. Go to File, Preferences, and find MIDI file. Then make sure that Ignore Master Track Events on Merge is deactivated, otherwise your tempo will not synchronize. Set your timeline to bars and beats and enable Snap. Then drag your MIDI file onto bar 1. Cubase will create a MIDI track for each instrument with all of the MIDI data on them and a Helion Sonic SE module. Remember that these tracks are simply note on and note off messages, and it's the synth or sampler module that turns those messages into sound. This track with the title of the piece can be safely deleted with Shift and Delete. We also need to remove some extra MIDI data that Sibelius adds to select the instrument. Select one of your tracks, and then go to the MIDI menu and open List Editor. We need to remove the program change and these controller messages, which set volume, pan, reverb amount, and so on. If these remain, then each time you play the track from the beginning, it will reset any changes you've made to the instrument, volume, etc. You'll need to do this for each track you have. Now that the MIDI is inside Cubase, you can start customizing the sound you want. First, examine the routing of your tracks. This flute track is sending the MIDI information to the Helion Sonic SE over channel 2. Piano is on channel 1. And cello is on channel 3. I can use this button to edit the instrument, as Cubase calls the synth or sample module, 
which opens up Halion Sonic SE. From here, I can click on the arrow next to the instrument name to choose a different sample sound, since these default ones are not great. You can find groups of instruments to listen through by category. Or, you can search for the sound you want in this box. You can also adjust the volume level, pan, and reverb amount in this module, which is convenient. If I want more detailed control over individual notes, I can double-click on any track to look at the MIDI data itself. Here I can see the notes on the piano roll. And at the bottom is each note's velocity, which is the strength of the sound. They're color-coded too, so that you can see at a glance which notes are louder or softer. You can adjust the velocity just by clicking a new point on the graph. You can also make notes longer or shorter. And if you really want complete control, there are other MIDI messages you can adjust, like expression, which is used for swells or other small dynamic changes, and modulation, which can adjust how quick the vibrato is. There are so many options that creating a great sounding track can easily take days of experimentation. There are also a great many sample libraries that can be purchased to get just the right sound you're looking for, from pop piano to orchestral strings and anything in between. In this way, many composers are able to customize the sound they create without ever using a microphone. These tools are also used to make mock-ups in the film industry so that the film director has a good idea how the soundtrack will sound before they record the orchestra. If you're using software like MuseScore, it's likely that you probably want something free and you don't have the money to spend on expensive software like Cubase Pro Tools and those kind of doors. So there are free options. And one of those that I've been looking at recently is Cakewalk by BandLab. It's completely free to download uh, and seems to work pretty well. So let's have a look at how we would load our MIDI file into Cakewalk. We can quite literally drag the MIDI file into Cakewalk. And it opens the project. We can close down that and maximize that. And here we have all of our different tracks. And Cakewalk has also added this Cakewalk TTS1, which is Cakewalk's which is Cakewalk's synthesizer or sampler general MIDI module. So each of these tracks is just the MIDI information that then sends those note on and off messages to the sampler module and we get the sound we want. Let's see what we have. There's certainly some things we might want to change, but it's worth looking around and inside Cakewalk to see what we're dealing with. We can edit this instrument, and this shows us what the different instruments we have are. Each MIDI track is then sent to one of these channels on the synthesizer. To make any changes to these existing instrument choices that Cakewalk has made, sometimes incorrectly, for instance, the clarinet is put on a fingered bass. I'm not quite sure why we need to double click. Let's minimize that for now. And we can make this bigger. Although what we actually need to do is look at views and event list. And now all of the track two events are brought up in a list. And these ones are all the notes and some controls. But what we're looking for is these controls here at the beginning. And those are the ones that send, that set the instrument and the reverb and the chorus. So let's just delete those. We'll need to do the same thing with each of our parts to make sure that none of them are being changed at the beginning. Now I can click on the name of the instrument and choose from preset, read, and clarinet. That changes to clarinet. And we hear the clarinet, that's fantastic. I can do similar things with each of these. The power of MIDI really comes in where we are able to edit in minute detail all of the details of the sound.
So I can, for instance, come into this electric bass and double click on it and opens up the piano roll. I can lengthen notes very easily. I can move notes if I had a wrong note. I can also adjust its velocity. So velocity is the how hard you hit the note on the keyboard, or in our case, um, a, a set velocity that MuseScore had. Uh, and we can change that velocity either by moving it up and down here, or by moving to the top of this note. And then we can drag up and down and it moves the velocity, which is really useful. Or we can just draw in a curve. And depending on when I, where I draw, that will change the velocity. But velocity is only one of the controllers that we can change. I can add more controllers, things like modulation. For normal instruments, this controls the vibrato. And I can also add expression, which controls small dynamics. And then I can make changes to that by drawing in lines. The Cakewalk TTS is general MIDI compliant, which means that it will automatically assign general instruments from your instrument list, and it's able to do that automatically. That can be very useful, but sometimes it doesn't get exactly the sound we want, and that's where third-party plugins come in. I have another MIDI file here that will show us particularly well how we can use our third-party plugins, and some of them are free. So Cakewalk automatically assigns these instruments to the Cakewalk TTS-1, and we can hear this track just to see what we're working with. Spitfire Audio is a company that makes fantastic sample libraries, and most of them can be pretty pricey. However, they've recently released a sample library which is completely free called BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover, intended for educational purposes, which is a fantastic way to get going with sample libraries. You do have to go through a little bit of a process. You register on their website, and then two weeks later, they'll send you the download. But it's well worth doing if you're interested in getting going with some orchestral libraries. Since these instruments are all orchestral, I would like to hear what it would sound like with their library. To do that, I need to look in the browser. So I'll go to Views and Browser, and there it comes up. It, we can collapse it and bring it back like that. This has our media, our plugins, and any notes that we have. But I'm interested in the plugins for now, and particularly not the MIDI effects, the audio effects, but the instruments. And under Synth, I have this BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. Because I have six instruments, I'm actually going to make six of those by right-clicking in the track area and insert instrument. Then I'll choose BBC Symphony Orchestra and make six of those tracks. Let's create those. Now I need to set up all my tracks. So I'll start by dragging Flute 1 to this first instance of the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Then I'll edit and choose a flute. And I'll follow the same pattern for the others. I'll set that up quickly, and then we can go and look in a bit more detail. OK, I've moved all of my MIDI data away from these tracks that are going to the Cakewalk TS1, and instead added them to the Symphony Orchestra tracks. All right, let's hear what we've got. There's certainly a huge improvement over the built-in sounds that come with Cakewalk. Let's go and look in a bit more detail at some of these. I'll start with the cellos. And to hear what exactly what they're doing, I'm going to solo that track and edit the instrument. Now, this is a standard feature of many sample libraries, is that they have different sounds that you can choose from. This one has them laid out in a particularly nice educational way, firstly so that you can see what instrument of the orchestra you're choosing, and also the kind of sound that you have. Since this cello is doing quite a short notes, I'm instead of choosing long notes, choose, going to choose the spiccato sound. 
that is much more appropriate sound than the long notes. And in fact, I'll do that with the double bass too. Let's hear those together. That's a really cool sound. Perhaps we can do the same with the violin. We want those nice short spiccato sounds. The problem now is that every single note is short. And this is where it gets into some detail and you can really take a lot of time in making your track really sound good. And so I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate this track. Click OK. This one I will keep with the long notes. But this one I'll keep with the short notes. Just on the basis of it, we've already got a better sound. I would probably need to now go and remove the long notes from here by selecting them and delete, and instead take the long note out of the spiccato. That's already got a bit of depth to it. Equally, I could make double the number of tracks that I have here to just even out the short notes and the long notes. In this way, with digital audio workstations paired with sample libraries, we can make some pretty detailed tracks.